A person who wins 10,000 people every month to God, let's say brings 10,000 people to Christianity, it will take them 60,000 years to bring the whole world to God. So that's a lot. Now, uh, go, go back, go back. So 10,000 people every month, let's, let's face it, let's pushing it. <laughs> In our church, we focus one. <laughs> if we do one a month, that's gonna probably, we probably need to live eternity here before we see six billion, but people are multiplying. And so 10,000 people a month, that's a lot. Six, 60,000, I mean, we only had, what was it, 2,000 years since the birth of Jesus? 60,000, that's a long way to go. But the statistics says that if a person brings two people every month, somebody say, I can do it. And teaches them to do the same, will win the whole world in 30 months. So that's what Jesus is saying. I want you to go bear fruit and I want you to let your fruit remain. It means teach the people to do the same. That's why Apostle Paul says to Timothy, he says, whatever I tell you, tell to other people. Make sure you tell to people who can tell to other people and that they can tell to other people and that they can tell to other people. So it gets to some people in Washington State and Pasco in 2014. And I'm so glad the link wasn't broken. Our goal is not to just we win as many people but the people we bring to Christ that they immediately begin to understand the mission on their life to help others come to Jesus Christ to become those fathers in Jesus name amen guys God doesn't want us to be Elijah's Elijah Elisha was the one that died and he had anointing in his bones you know what that means that means anointing was never passed on to the next generation it died in his bones they threw a dead man on Elijah and Elisha's tomb and the dead man came to life. What would have happened if that anointing wouldn't stay in his bones but went on to someone else? Not only one person would be come back to life. Hundreds and thousands. Why was the anointing that was double on Elisha stayed in Elisha? Because Elisha was anointed. Superman. But Elisha lacked the father's heart. Because when his servant made a mistake, he put leprosy on him. Now fathers don't do that. Prophets do that. Fathers don't do that. Jesus was greater than Elisha. And all of his disciples, some did corny things, some really foolish things. And Jesus rebuked them. Jesus encouraged them. But Jesus, you never see Jesus saying, Peter, I give you cancer. John, leprosy. This guy, dead. <laughs> Drop dead right now. We don't see Jesus ever cursing his disciples though they made mistakes. Jesus on the opposite, he came back from the dead and he saw them returning to their old life and he, what did he say to them? He says, come on Peter, I got breakfast for you. He didn't say, come on Peter, I cannot wait to put leprosy on you for betraying me. He didn't say, come on Peter, I cannot wait to just send you to hell for what you did and have you join your friend Judas over there. He didn't do that. Because see, a real mentor is not someone who can just pull the potential out of people but who can deal with people's mess. If you cannot deal with people's mess, you cannot be a father. If you cannot deal with people's mistakes, with people's shortcomings, with people's weaknesses, you, that is the part that requires on our end to do the part of bringing people to Jesus Christ. Come somebody say amen. amen. Fruit that remains, revival that remains is we're going to bring people to Jesus and most importantly we are going to disciple people. Our vision in the church is evangelism. Our strategy is discipleship.